Coming up on Maryland Newsline, I'm Shelby Copeland. Amid all the protests that resulted after the election, I'll tell you about the one that happened right here. Sheila Dixon stresses the easiness of voting for her in the upcoming election. You simply bubble in right in and fill in her name. The cost of prescription drugs have been escalating in the last decade. Now three out of four Marylanders are concerned about those price hikes. That's right, I'm here at Pinstripes at Georgetown where you get more bang for your buck. You get a meal and the entertainment. So I'm going to go over here to Paul Mazursky. Paul, can you just tell me what you do here? Yeah, so I'm the general manager at this location. I've been around for about three years since the time we've opened in Georgetown. So manage day-to-day -day operations. One of my favorite things to do is checking in with the guests, making sure that everybody's really having a great time while they're here with us. Great. Now you see here that it's quite empty, but what is it like on a typical Friday night? Yeah, Friday night we'll pack about 100 people into the lanes here, so each lane can accommodate up to eight. And on a Friday night we do have quite a crowd, so you're going to see that every one of the you know comfortable couches has people on it doing food and beverages. People come after work for cocktails, and a lot of them stay till we close at one o'clock in the morning. All righty, well for kicks and giggles, I'll try my hand at some bowling here. Um, so I will just take this and you just throw it out. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. And I knew it. Of course I would get a gutter ball. Well, that's all for now. I'm not having the best luck, but maybe you will the next time you come and visit Pinstripes. Back to you. Thanks, Angelo. In one of the most divisive presidential elections of our time, Marylanders finally began casting their ballots on the first day of early voting. We told you earlier that Vermont has been called for Hillary Clinton, and Indiana and Kentucky were called for Trump. Well, we have one more to add to that list. West Virginia is also called for Trump. North Carolina's closed just at 7.30, so we could see more results coming in shortly. Maryland's polls have just closed moments ago at 8 o'clock, and CNN is projecting a win for Maryland for Hillary Clinton, as have Delaware, D.C., and the swing state of Pennsylvania. All of those numbers are tallying up, and we'll have more updates coming your way. Here in Maryland, we'll be looking at the Senate race where Democrat Chris Van Hollen is running against Republican Kathy Schlega in a bid to fill longtime Senator Barbara Mikulski's seat. We'll bring you more updates and results as the evening progresses. Back to you in the studio. On their mission to South Carolina, members of the Civil Air Patrol flew four hours in this aircraft. 88-year-old homeowner Leonard Miller woke up to a silver Honda crashed into his home. Now, if you look at this, imagine dealing with this kind of situation for the fifth time. That's right, Miller says this is the fifth time in 46 years that a car has hit his home. Around 2 o'clock this morning, the driver came down Cipriana Road, jumped the curb, and crashed right into the bottom floor of his house. Miller says he woke up to the loud crash, came downstairs, and there it was, right in his living room. What I felt and heard was a car was coming through my windows. Police have not released any details about the state of the driver, but we do know that he was taken by another car to the hospital. And if we could spin the camera around for you, look at this. This house is at the bottom of the hill on Cipriana Road, directly in the path of oncoming traffic. One distraction away from a cruise through this yard. In Lanham, Shelby Copeland, Good Morning Washington. The voting site is now officially open. More than 100 people waited in line at 8 o'clock at the Silver Spring Civic Center. Montgomery County Board of Elections President Jim Shalek says this is only the beginning. So we're encouraging people to come out and vote early so that on election day the crowds won't be that big. But in the midst of all the excitement remains the tension and negativity of the election. I guess it's probably in history-wise one of the nastiest elections that, that I can remember. Good manners, people being civil to one another has sort of like disappeared. Although it's been a rough ride, these voters think that it's better to vote and vote early than to not vote at all. I'm Scotch-Irish, so the rules are if you don't vote, you can't complain. So now I have the option to complain. I think it's really important that everyone make their voice heard. That's the essence of our democracy. As voters head inside to cast their ballot, campaigners make their final efforts to promote their candidates. The consensus among this voting location, Hillary Clinton. I'm here because um, I'm 100% totally excited to be a nasty woman to change the course of history casting my ballot for the first woman president of the United States. The more often you do your job, the better you are at it. 
and she's been there and she's done that and that's why I'm voting for Hillary. It was tough to find a Trump supporter in this crowd and some wanted nothing to do with either major party candidate. I'm one of the small minority of people who decided not to vote for either one. I decided to vote for a libertarian candidate. Board of Elections President Shalek says this may well be the largest voter turnout since early voting began in Maryland four years ago. It's really exciting. We're electing a president. There's nothing more important than that. In Silver Spring, I'm Shelby Copeland, CNS TV. It's finally election day and Donald Trump is still the Republican nominee, but without the support of some members of his party. And that includes Maryland's governor, Larry Hogan. And I think Governor Hogan is to be commended for having the guts and the courage to say, I am not voting for that man. While Governor Hogan's not said who he'll vote for, he's made it clear that it won't be Donald Trump. It's hard for me to know what Governor Hogan's true motivations were, but my read of the situation is that we had a combination of his values fitting together with what's best for him politically. And according to recent polls, Marylanders overwhelmingly like the job Hogan's been doing. First of all, I want to say that uh, it's pretty remarkable that Governor Hogan has been soaring in his favorability ratings when you consider that he is the first Republican governor in many years since Bob Ehrlich before. And it's such a blue, blue, blue state. And that's a fact not lost on Bruce Poole, chairman of the Maryland Democratic Party. I think if I were advising the governor, I would like very much that his poll ratings are high. That's a really good thing, to be liked by people. But you can be liked and not necessarily followed. And Delegate Will Smith thinks it will take more than just popularity for Hogan to win re-election. Again, going back to this really this polls over principles approach, which is tremendously popular, uh, but it doesn't really provide a grand vision to really propel our state forward. And that's what you need. And so for the Democratic nominees coming up, I'm looking for really robust and grand ideas. As for the governor, some suggest he may have to do a little work to bring back some of his party members. If Governor Hogan is looking to win over Republicans in the next governor's race, it's going to be important for him to bring those Trump supporters into the fold for him. And the clock is running. The gubernatorial primary is set for June 26, 2018. In Annapolis, Shelby Copeland, CNS-TV.